Congressman, the border, uh, I, this is not something, I mean, thankfully, President Trump ran on this issue. I know you've always been outstanding on the issue, and it's not that the problem got solved, because you can never fully solve a problem when you have a wealthy nation bordering less wealthy nations, but it really didn't it didn't become, it didn't make headlines anymore by the end of the Trump presidency. He'd done you all had done such a great job with it. It's a complete disaster now. The House Republicans put out these numbers and they're stunning. My question is, how does this end when the Democrats have run on open borders rhetoric? Can they change now? Is it even politically possible to change? No, it's not politically possible. And it, and you, you ask a very good question. How is it going to end? It's not going to end well because what you have is their political philosophy about keeping order, uh, open borders and literally a, a, uh, a policy at the southern border that we warned the Biden administration that if they did this, this is exactly what they would see. You know, we're almost uh, up at over 200,000 people that are coming across uh, the border illegally in a month let alone what we will see in a year. And you're right. Uh, we had uh, a number of people in 2019. The border was was uh, in, in chaos. Uh, what happened, President Trump said, we're going to fix it. And he put uh, not only the, the head of DHS, but Customs and Border Patrol and all those together in a room and said, let's make sure we get it done. And we did. We, we uh, brought it to its lowest level in 2020. And yet, when they started talking about their open border or what I would call the welcome mat kind of approach at the southern border uh you know I, i've said it before it, it's almost like inviting someone to a party and saying come on in and then when they get there you close the door well they still end up on your front lawn and what we need to make sure of is that the policies that donald trump and his administration put forth are brought back it's the only way that'll solve it and if not we're going to see millions of people coming across our border, and it won't be just a crisis there. It'll be a crisis in every city across the country. Speaking with former Congressman, former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, Congressman, the President wanted out of Afghanistan. President Trump did. It was no secret. Uh, it's been a long, wasteful disaster over there. It's pretty much common knowledge with everybody on both sides of the aisle. Joe Biden, we have officials announcing today, Joe Biden is withdrawing the rest of the U.S. troops. Well, I'm old enough to remember when that was going to result in the end of the world and World War III all wrapped up in one when President Trump uh, suggested it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, if President Trump suggests anything in terms of stopping endless wars, and that's what you're talking about, Jesse, is stopping the endless wars that really uh, do not put forth an American priority. The president was very clear on that when when I served with him, and and he got major pushback, not just from uh, those on Capitol Hill that want to make sure that they keep the uh, defense industrial uh, uh, mechanism in place. But he got pushed back from some within DOD and over at the Pentagon, which uh, they most of those flag officers, all they've known is an existence in Afghanistan. And yet now what we're seeing is Biden is following up on, on something that the president initiated, got us down to 2,500 uh, troops before uh, he and I left. And, uh, and, and if, if anyone were to suggest that Joe Biden uh, would do this and not get the, the left or the right rising up, uh, it would have surprised me. But because it's Joe Biden, he gets a pass uh, when, when President Trump didn't. Hey, thanks so much for watching The First on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me. Thanks.